Section 2 of Studies in Word Association. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Studies in Word Association by Carl Gustav Jung. Translated by M. D. Eder. Chapter 2. The Associations of Normal Subjects. Part 1. By Dr. C. G. Jung and Dr. F. Ricklin. For some time past, great attention has been paid in this clinic to the study of association. To obtain material scientifically comparable, my honored chief, Professor Bluler, arranged a schedule of 156 stimulus words and made use of them in experiments upon psychoses of all kinds. A serious difficulty, however, soon arose. There was no means of differentiating with statistical precision the associations of the abnormal from the normal. There was no material from which to ascertain the variations in normal persons, or to express as definite laws the purely haphazard nature, as it seemed, of the associations. To remedy this want to some extent, thus paving the way for the investigation of pathological associations, I arranged to collect a considerable number of normal associations, studying at the same time their main determinants. I have carried out this work conjointly with my esteemed colleague, Dr. Ricklin. The general outline of our experiment is as follows. In the first place, we collected the associations of a large number of normal persons in order to ascertain, first, whether any kind of law was to be deduced, and, secondly, if any individual laws were present, i.e., if certain types of reactions could be discovered. With this investigation, we united another of a general psychological nature. The association process is an extremely transient and variable psychological process. It is influenced by innumerable psychical events which evade objective control. Among the psychical facts having a supreme influence upon the association process, attention is cardinal. It is attention which primarily directs and modifies the association process, and at the same time it is the psychical factor which most readily submits to experiment. Attention is also a delicate affective apparatus which immediately reacts to abnormal physical and mental conditions and thus modifies the work of association. Attention is that endlessly complicated mechanism which the association process, by innumerable threads, binds to all the other phenomena of psychical and physical origin represented in consciousness. If we knew the effects of attention upon the process of association, then we should know, at least in broad outline, the corresponding effects of every psychical event which is able to influence attention. These considerations induced us to investigate experimentally the influence of attention upon the association process, hoping thus to clear up the following questions in particular with some measure of certainty. 1. What are the laws of the variations of attention within the limit of the normal? 2. What are the direct effects of attention upon the association process? More especially, does the specific nature of the association decrease as the field of consciousness grows more distant? Our experiments have disclosed a series of facts which not only encourage us to pursue the quest into the pathological domain, but, we believe, also enable us to do so. C.G. Jung Part 1 1. 
General Plan of the Experiments The experiments were carried out alternately by the two authors. Each one carried out alone the whole series of experiments upon the subject. Altogether, 38 persons took part in the experiments. Nine of the men and 14 of the women were highly educated persons. Seven of the men and eight of the women were ill-educated. Their ages ranged from 20 to 50 years. Care was taken to select, as far as possible, quite normal individuals for the experiments. This, however, especially among the well-educated, gave rise to unexpected difficulties, for it is just at this level that the discrimination of what is an average normal becomes an extremely nice question. All we can hope is that in the selection of the individuals, we have not departed very far from the normal. We give the figures in detail, occasionally adding a very brief character sketch of the person which will facilitate the understanding of a few anomalies. Naturally, the two authors have carried out the experiments on one another. The association in every case were obtained by calling out the stimulus word. Altogether, we made use of 400 different stimulus words. Grammatically, they were composed of the following. Nouns, 231. Adjectives, 69. Verbs, 82. Adverbs and numerals, 18. No attention was paid to the number of syllables. The stimulus words were one to three syllables nor were the stimulus words arranged in definite categories as in Summer's experiments. On the other hand, so far as possible, care was taken that stimulus words similar in form or sense did not follow one another, so as to prevent the subject settling down after two or three reactions to one circumscribed domain. By an unfortunate accident, it happened that among the first hundred stimulus words, there were about thirty, to which there were ready associations in temporal and spatial coexistence, whilst in the second hundred there were only about twenty, thus making a notable difference in the coexistence associations between the first and second hundred. The want of stimulus words of that particular kind is made good by verbs. Stress was placed on excluding difficult and rare words in order to prevent mistakes or prolonged reactions through want of knowledge on the part of the subjects. The stimulus words were as far as possible taken from words in daily use. This consideration was the more essential for us because in most of our experiments we labored under abnormal conditions as to language. In German Switzerland, the German-Swiss dialect, or rather dialects, not only differ considerably from literary German, but contain also no slight differences among themselves, especially differences in sound. The child learns literary German at school almost as a foreign language. Later on, the educated acquire a fairly complete knowledge of and practice in the German tongue. The uneducated, however, unless he has lived for some time in Germany, retains at the most those German phrases which he has learnt in school, later adding little or nothing thereto. Literary German is not the less familiar to him in its written and printed form, and he understands it when spoken without being able himself to speak a fluent and faultless literary German. We, therefore, repeatedly tried to call out the stimulus words in their dialect form, but we soon noticed that the ill-educated did not understand the dialect words as well as the literary German, and that they generally took pains to react in literary German. This somewhat paradoxical occurrence is due to the fact that Swiss German is purely an acoustic motor speech, 
which is very rarely read or written. The Swiss is, therefore, not accustomed to sense his words as single items, but knows them only in acoustic motor association along with other words. If he has to say one word by itself without the article, he generally chooses the literary German form. We therefore gave up dialect stimulus words entirely in our experiments. In the great majority of cases, the reaction was the correct literary German. Likely reactions in Swiss dialect were accepted as valid. The reactions were written down as they were given. Persons who had never taken part in such an experiment were first of all informed as to its meaning and given practical demonstrations by examples as to how they had to react. Not a few amongst the uneducated believed it was a kind of question and answer game in which the object was to find an appropriate completion of the stimulus word, e.g. house, housefly, wild, wildcat. The experiments were only begun when it was clear that the nature of the experiment was understood. A case of non-understanding, we would emphasize, never occurred. A lack of intelligence is far less disturbing than affect, namely, an emotional stupidity which was not infrequent. A certain significance attaches to the kind of schoolroom attitude in which many of the uneducated approached the work, putting on a somewhat formal and stiff air. We arranged our experiments in the following way. First, 200 reactions were made without further conditions. The reactions were timed by a one-fifth second stopwatch, the stop hand being released when the test word was uttered and stopped when the reaction word was spoken. Footnote. A report will be made later on about the time experiments. The time was not measured in all the persons experimented on. End footnote. Naturally, we do not imagine that we have measured any intricate psychological times by this simple procedure. We only wanted to obtain a general idea of the average and approximate reaction times, important in many cases, and more especially valuable in the classification of the associations. After 200 reactions, the reactions were as far as possible forthwith classified with the help of the subject. In the educated persons, this was always done. In the uneducated, who most rarely had any kind of capacity for introspection, this was, of course, not possible. It was there necessary to limit oneself to obtaining an explanation of the threads in the most striking associations. The result of the experiment was divided into a first and a second hundred and written down separately. During the experiment, the psychical state was controlled objectively and subjectively as far as possible. If, for any reason, there was any physiological fatigue, the experiment with the second hundred was deferred till the next day. Among the educated, one may say such fatigue never occurred, so that in most cases the second series could be concluded forthwith. The second series consisted of 100 reactions which were carried out during a condition of inner distraction. The subjects were requested to concentrate their attention as far as possible upon what is called the A phenomenon, Cortez, and at the same time to react as quickly as possible, that is to say, as promptly as in the first experiment. By the A phenomenon, we understand with Cordes the sum of those psychological phenomena which are directly evoked by the perception of the acoustic stimulus. To control the compliance of the A phenomenon by the subjects, they had to describe directly after each reaction what they noted during the reaction. A further classification was made at the end of the experiment. Naturally, only educated persons could be used in these experiments, 
and these unfortunately required selecting, for a certain amount of psychological aptitude is required for the attentive consideration of one's own psychical phenomenon. The third experimental series was only carried out on the second day. It consisted of 100 reactions carried out during a condition of outer distraction. The distraction in these experiments was arranged as follows. To the beat of a metronome, the subject had to make pencil strokes about one centimeter in length. The beats for the first 50 reactions were 60 per minute. For the second 50 reactions, 100 per minute. The results of the first 50 reactions and of the second 50 were written down separately and for easier comparison were calculated to 100. In some few of the subjects, the metronome was accelerated after each 25 reactions in order to exclude habit being too rapidly formed. The beats, in this case, were increased from 60 to 72 and from 100 to 108 per minute. Even so, the factor of habit unfortunately plays a great part in these experiments, as might be a priori expected. Many persons become very quickly accustomed to the purely mechanical activity which is in the second phase of the experiment only alters the beat. It is not easy to devise other distraction stimuli of similar continuity and regularity and without the additional factor of a verbal image. This is especially so in the case of the uneducated, upon whose intelligence and willpower too great demands must not be made. In seeking for some appropriate distraction stimulus, we were above all careful to exclude everything which could in any way arouse verbal presentations. In the arrangement of our experiments, we believe that we have excluded this kind of influence. With these experiments, 300 to 400 associations were, on the average, carried out with each person. We also tried to complete our material in some other directions, so as to obtain a kind of addendum to Aschaffenberg's results. With this object, we also carried out experiments with some of our subjects when in a state of obvious fatigue we were able to do reactions of this kind with six persons. In one individual, associations were also carried out in a state of morning drowsiness after a good night's sleep, thus excluding the factor of fatigue. In one person, associations were carried out in a state of severe depression, irritation, without fatigue. In this way, we obtained in round figures 12,400 associations. End of section 2